my diet when I was anorexic was like one orange salad without dressing, just the vegetable, and then some bread at the in the evening. And I was a dancer, so it was bad. Or most of people are actually doing the vegan diet, but they think it's healthy, like because you know there are all the media telling you yeah, you should eat no meat and red meat killing kills you and. Like, even my grandma, who has no idea about any nutrition, any biology, anything like that, any science, even she told me, oh, but aren't you afraid of the cholesterol? God, it's so funny because when I had these presentations or I talked about a carnivore diet, all my classmates went against me, you know, calling me harmful and bad. But they have full phase of acting, so how can they even talk about it when they obviously are healthy? Stephanie, how are you today? Tell us a little bit about, uh, I guess just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, I am a 17 years old girl from the Czech Republic. Uh, I'm being born here, so English is not my native, native language, Czech. I was like, I made some mistakes, right? <laughs> That's your, your English is far better than my Czech would be. I can tell you that. I don't think I can say one, I don't think I can say one word in Czech, maybe one. I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, even though I'm 17, I already experienced many problems that were not only physical, but also mental issues. And I'm here because of the carnivore diet, obviously. And I also, I've got my YouTube channel because of the carnivore diet, because it's really fascinating what results I got from basically the March 2023 when I started. So it's more than a year that I'm on the carnivore diet. Okay. And so you said you had some health on your 17s. What kind of things were you dealing uh, with uh, uh, recently prior to this? Yeah, my mom also has mental issue basically her whole life. My childhood was a bit, wasn't that easy from her side, but yeah. And then when I got a bit older, I also was a dancer girl when I was like five. Yeah, five. So I was dancer. I was a dancer for seven, no, 11 years. And this sport is very very difficult like you have to spend every day hours and hours doing that and also obviously they wanted me to lose weight because when i was a girl i think my or how am i supposed to look naturally is it like a very super skinny girl i just have the curves and so on is this a ballet is it ballet type dance? no i was doing a slat and ballroom dance sport okay it's in couples, so with a man. And yes, and there it was required, or yeah, it was required for me to lose weight. Also, I was thinking that I'm too fat and I'm ugly and so on. Yeah, and also there were the problems with my mom, so my I was a little insecure. And then I was not getting worse and worse. I was more and more into the healthy diet, meaning just eating less and less calories. And after some time, I ended up at a rack, say, when I was like 12. And I was like 42 kilos in comparison to like 63. So it was a big difference, even though I said I'm the same height. But yeah. Yeah. 42 kilos for us, that's about 92 pounds for the people that are, <laughs> aren't good at kilos. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Anyway. But yeah. And then after some time, there was the Corona COVID and I had to stay home. So there were no trainings and I started gaining weight a lot. And I started eating a lot because people think when someone has anorexia, they think, yeah, they can deal with food so well, but it's just that they skip it and they do something. I was on the training, so I didn't even have the chance to eat, but I wanted to eat so much, obviously, because I was very hungry and malnourished and yeah so when I had the chance to eat basically all day I just ate all day and I started gaining weight and two three yeah in three years I gained almost 30 kilograms and done even more that's a lot yeah and and I had this issue and because I was gaining weight I started to have severe mental issues because I couldn't handle it I needed weight so much uh, I ended up having bulimia and other eating disorders, except the anorexia. And uh, I was desperate, so I felt less active here. I had suicidal thoughts, I had depression and anxiety. I and mean, obviously with the corona, it was easy to get depression when you were at home anyway the whole day. And after all that, or during that, the whole time basically, from when I was like 12, I didn't eat meat almost. I just very little. And by the time I was like 
40, 30, and I had no meat. And I said I don't like it. It was because in my mind I thought that when someone eats fat, it makes you fat. But when someone eats sugar, it's okay, especially rice food that is such healthy sugars. And so I basically ate no fat. My diet when I was at a restaurant was like one orange salad without dressing, just the vegetable, and then some bread at the, in the evening. And I was a dancer, so it was bad. And and later on, I ate so many cookies and so on, but I also ended up eating a few times, like for a month or something, but many times. And basically, I was vegetarian since I was like, yeah, 13, as I said. And by the time I started also getting physical issues, I had acne, I had eczema, very bad eczema on both of my hands, and I started also having a pain in my stomach or more like in the duodenum. And I thought that I have ulcers, but that wasn't the case. It was just bad gut health. And yes, I suffered from all this. By the time I was like 16, my mental health was better. I still was very unstable, but I didn't have any extreme depression or anything. It was also because I had to go to school every day and I, I was forced to function somehow. But I also slept badly. I slept six hours a day and I was very tired all the time. And then I ate shows of sugar and so on. And after, after that whole time in March 2023, as I mentioned already, I had my boyfriend and he also used to be a a long time ago, but at that time he was a carnivore for like more than a year already. And so he started talking about that, and I was vegan at that time, and I was like, no, that's nonsense, that's garbage, it kind of work, you have to eat vegetable. And he was like, no, like, it's not like that, and he always explained it, and I found myself in the state that I actually, I felt, yeah, he's right, I cannot say anything to it. And I started looking more into it. Obviously, I, I was still saying no, it's nonsense, but I was looking into it. I remember watching the first video I was so carnivore was about Dr. Anthony J.V. And I found it interesting, but I still didn't want to do it. But after some time, I was convinced by all the information. And I tried it. I tried eating meat again. I stopped eating processed food. I just ate meat and some vegetable and fruit in the beginning. It was perfect for like a week and something. And... The physical issues, some of them, and the mental issues immediately go better. Like immediately in the first week, even though I was still eating some vegetable. And I was like, wow. And the problem I had for a long time, the same as my mother and just the, the whole time, was that I never, I, I didn't know what is hunger. I always thought I'm hungry, but I was just malnourished and my body wanted to get more nutrients. I wasn't really hungry. My, my stomach was full. But I still wanted to eat more because there was just not enough nutrients. And at that time, I finally, I felt so satiated. I didn't really feel like eating any cookies around and any garbage around snacking. And I felt, wow, I can actually eat three times a day because before I had to eat eight times a day. And, and that was so amazing. So I decided I'll go further and I'll also take away all the vegetable and all the food. And I'll just go carnivore. And by the time of the first month or the first 14 days, the gut problems were completely away. I didn't have any pain anymore. And also the eczema disappeared and the acne got better. After the first month and something, the acne disappeared as well. What I also suffered before with was I had very painful menstrual uh, cycles. It was terrible. I would be able to just lay down and do nothing in a certain position only. And that disappears as well. Like I feel something that is not a pain or anything like that. And yeah, so all of these things got better. And also then there were some details like my hair, the energy of the issue throughout the day was just constant. And I started sleeping better and just... My physical health and the mental health, also the mental health was better, com or better, very good. From that moment, I don't have any instabilities and... Any when you decided as a young girl, you're still young, but I mean younger girl, that you're dancing and you have to be thin and you developed this eating disorder, anorexia, and then also you became vegan, which some people would argue is also an eating disorder, but 
Did what was compelling you to go vegan? Was it is it popular in the Czech Republic now? Is it popular among dancers? What is what drew what drove you to that? Actually, my I remember my coach didn't like it. Like he told me eat meat. He never specified why, but he just told me boost it was like it is well. I hated myself. So I didn't really think of that is bad. I knew it's bad for me, but I didn't care. And I was thinking of the nature that I'm staining the nature by the vegan diet and it's so ecologically you know, it's not so obviously, especially the way I did it. But I thought it's so, so good and I'm not eating animals, I'm not killing them and blah, blah. Yeah. And so you felt bad about yourself and you thought maybe by just not eating meat, I would somehow do some good in the world yeah. because you thought yeah. you were maybe not a good person. Interesting. Yeah. This, there is a lot of this kind of, we call it misanthrop misanthropy or misanthropic, not liking humans as vegans. And a lot of them don't really like humans. And yeah. It's unfortunate. You know, your your mother, you said, had some issues. It was she had, Did she have a similar type of diet? What was her, is her diet similar in a way, uh -huh. all, mostly vegetables, or what does she do? No, she basically did what I did later on when I gained weight, and that was, it's like excessive overeating. So it's like bulimia, but without puking. You basically okay, eat, so and then you don't eat for right. a long time and like that. So when the time okay, that she so didn't eat was just a salad, and then she overate with, you, you cannot imagine, crazy. When I say I had an into eating disorder, I cannot compare myself to her when she was able to eat it at once. It's incredible. Two loaves of bread, three mustards, jam, cake, a fruit, everything at once. Yeah, compulsive eating disorder yeah, yeah. is what a lot of people might describe that as. Yeah, so interesting. And you're 17. Are you still living at home with your parents or your mom or um, is that... My boyfriend came to, even though he is, uh, he's from Romania and you live in Belgium, but then he moved to Czechia. So now I live mostly with him, but I go to my dad and my mom because they are divorced. Yeah. Okay. And with your carnivore diet now, your, the, your parents have any sort of concerns around that? In the beginning, it was, <laughs> it was anger around, right? I actually, in the beginning, my mom wasn't really against it. She didn't believe I'll do it. She thought it's um, very good, the same as any other like short-term diet. She didn't have really an issue with that. So when I started, I came to her because I didn't want my dad to know about it before I like try it out and I know more about it. And then I told him he found I out, I think. And yeah, there were more yeah, arguments were about more it, but it just no, they cannot argue with me. But they're not really interested in anything like that, especially my mom. When I beat them with arguments, there's just nothing to say. But I wouldn't say I was trying to, especially my dad, he had an injury some time ago. And I told him, eat meat, come on, you're old already or older. And you should eat just meat or lots of meat at least, so you show properly. But he didn't listen and now he still has issues of him three months to walk because he just eat garbage. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, how difficult is it in, as well, you're 17, so you probably don't have a, goal, a tremendous income to, to pursue a carnivore diet in the Czech Republic? Is it mostly pork or what kind of things are you able to eat? Well, in Czech, yeah, there is lots of meat because there, there are lots of meat eaters also with garbage. But the cuisine in Czech yeah, is very about meat. There's lots of meat. There are shops where you can buy a lot. There's also lots of butcher shops around and... Um, you can buy anything in my beef, pork, and chicken, and other meats. But I think the beef, obviously, is the most expensive as in all countries. But there are no really, like, extra special steaks, like two types of steaks. I don't care because communal beef is the best, obviously. And in the beginning, I used to eat the, all kinds of meat, chicken, and pork, because I thought it's, so it would be expensive. But as the time went, I was like, I am, I'm very minimalistic. I don't buy anything. So let's just invest in the diet. And now I eat mostly beef because it's just the most nutritious, the best. It fills me the most, satiates me the most. So, and it's not really that expensive, to be honest. I still spend much less than most people do because the other people buy snacks, coffees, and so many things. When I go to the show, that's really... It makes me crazy how there are these women with these huge strolls full of beans being in the shop for an hour while it just gets to five minutes it, and then go and take me. And then they pay like 3,000 crowns for all the lettuce and monsters and they think they will be so healthy, but it's just bad for them. What, how has this affected your mental health? Because you said at one point you didn't like yourself, you felt bad about maybe depression. Has this helped? Yeah, I feel great. There is still some 
trauma from my mom that you cannot really heal that with diet, but I'm trying to work with that. But there is no mental instability. There is no... Because when we talk about mental health, it's only... Even if you go to school uh, for psychiatrists, it's just not only about chemical instability in the brain. And so if you just have the right cagnifles in your brain and it just works probably properly then obviously you're gonna feel much better you won't have any issues for there are people who i think you know about it obviously there are people who say that they get reverse schizophrenia even with diet yeah i believe it's really if you eat properly the brain will work properly yeah i think that's Reasonable is a reasonable assumption. Are you still in school then? I, I don't know. what. Are you still dancing? What's going uh, on with you in general? I stopped dancing a long time ago. And yeah, I'm happy I did because it doesn't look good for the law. However, I'm still at school. Yeah, sadly. <laughs> and yeah, I'm in the, I'm in the, yeah, the next year I'm going to be in the last grade, the grammar school, which is difficult, but yeah, it just, I'm making individual now lessons with you need time at home and I come to tests and I basically if I come on. But it's really for example now we do something something about cards and chemistry classes and I just looked into it. I just cannot do it because there is just nonsense. Like they never teach anything useful actually. It's just structures and formulas and blah blah but there is i was really is there was some theory and i was like oh there must be at least one interesting information one useful information there was none what do you so do you have like thoughts on what you want to do when you're a little older is it to continue your education is it to to what do you think you're going to end up doing um i educate myself just from what's available it can be videos studies some articles books and I educate myself on the diet, on the nutrition, but I do not really want to continue in the school system because I strongly disagree with that. Also, I'm conservative, so I want to have a child young and with my boyfriend, we want to just build a future, live together and all the other things. I was thinking of continuing any uh, college after high school. What, uh... You mentioned you have a, a YouTube channel now. Um, what do you, I assume you talk about maybe a carnivore diet on that channel, or what do you talk about and who's your audience and how has that been received? I have a YouTube channel just shortly, so I just have like 300 subscribers, so it's nothing um, big. And I, I wanted to spread the carnivore diet. Also, I didn't mention before, but I did a course in nutrition. It's obviously nervous because it's a course, but I just wanted to have the paper. And I want to continue doing nutrition online, but not like a full... I, I'm not expecting from it to be a full-time job, but just do it to have some money. And it's very flexible because you work on your own. And yeah, so that's... And I, in my YouTube channel, I talk about the diet, obviously. I have ideas about some industries and some biology in, in there. I have also some lifetime videos about carnivore diet, my my journey, and other things. I have video about cholesterol. I think also hard um, about Randall cycle. Yeah. Do you look? Your channel, I assume, isn't is not in English. It's in Czech. Oh, it's in English. It. Oh, it's in English. Yeah. It's in English. Okay, interesting. What is the? Because I, I know I've met a few people from the Czech Republic that have done carnivore. What is the overall climate like? Is it mostly? pushing for veganism plant-based or are there more people doing maybe more meat-based diets? What is your guess? Well, I don't think that people are actually, or lots of people are actually doing the vegan diet, but they think it's healthy because there are all the media telling you, you should eat no meat and red meat killing kills you. And even my grandma who has no idea about any nutrition, any biology, anything like that, any science, even she told me, oh, aren't you afraid of the cholesterol? So there is just the thoughts and the ideas of that is bad, but they don't really do it. They don't apply it. There are not very many people who will do the vegan diet, maybe young people, but even in my class, there are not really many of them or actually in town, like beef vegan. Okay. And do you have any, obviously you said you're not really excited about school, any of your classmates when you go to school, do you eat meat and do they say anything or is that, yeah, is that um, do you not eat lunch? I have a friend that she was like me a bit back then. She was very liberal and she was wanted to be a vegan and she friend being a vegan. And now it's basically my only friend. 
And she converted it to the carnivore diet, so she does it as well. And so we talk about it a lot. And yeah, our classmates are, they're just mostly, they don't care. They don't want to care and they just go through their lives not caring about anything. I had some presentations at school where I implied the carnivore diet where I talked about it. As because I, let's say I talked about the gut health and I had the presentation in biology. And I mentioned the carnivore diet where I mentioned that, yeah, and then sugar is bad for you and blah, blah. But they even, even if they had questions, not on them actually care. They just find me annoying and they think it's garbage, even though they don't know, they have no information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. It's obviously you're going against the grain, so to speak. A lot of people think that you have to eat all these vegetables to be healthy and all the nutrition comes from vegetables when the reality is meat has a lot more nutrition in it, at least I certainly think so. What do you, what difficulties did you have with the diet? Was it, it sounds like it's been generally pretty positive. Were there some negatives that came with it? Mm -hmm. Not really negatives like that, but the only thing I, I struggle for, I still have a struggle with, not, not all, but recently I still did, is berries. Is Once I include them in the diet, I just keep eating so much of them. And it has so many problems. I get acne, I gain weight, and just always because of the sugar. But yeah, berries, that's... Because in the carnivore, not in the carnivore community, many people say, yeah, berries are okay. And then I say, like, hey, it's okay, and I get more, and it's still okay, and then I ended up eating kilo of yogurt in a day. I don't think dairies are okay, I think, obviously, butter is great, it is has no sugar. But as Anthony J.P. said as well, it should be just as a condiment to the meat that shouldn't be so really data as food. Yeah, dairy is easy to overconsume. That's the job of dairy. You think about well, why cows use it to put on weight. Babies use it to put on weight. It's got a lot of things in there that make us want to consume a lot of it. Yeah, interesting. A lot of people do struggle with dairy. It's one of those It's one of those foods that people have to be cautious with in some regards. I have it from time to time and you just have to be, be mindful that it is very easy to overconsume. You'd mentioned uh, one, one of the common <laughs> things of teenagers is acne. Acne is very common and it's, for some reason it's just, that's what you associate with typically, although many adults still have acne. Have you found that the diet has greatly improved that? You, you, I guess it sounds like it has. Yes, like even if you look at my skin, like I don't have any issues. And it also, except that yeah, I get rid of acne, it's just so shiny, so bright. And it's really sad when I look at it. It's so funny because when I had these presentations or I talked about a carnivore diet, all my classmates went against me, calling me harmful and bad. But they have full phase of acne, so how can they even talk about it when they obviously are healthy? And I made a post on Instagram saying that acne is normal. That was a terrible thing. If all of them start reacting, yeah, I'm harmful and that it's normal. And it just doesn't matter what kind of arguments you give them. They just are like drones going like a cat speed and they're not listening. When you when they say you're harmful, what, what do they mean you're harmful? You're harmful because you're hurting animals, you're telling people bad nutrition. No, that, that I that? basically disrespect all the people with acne. That I say that they just eat garbage and it's not like it's normal. Is they want to feel that it's not their fault, that it just happens, that it's the puberty... And they don't want us to hear that actually they could do something with that. I don't want to do anything with that. Yeah, yeah, I get it. That's, so it's it, they want to say that there's not. It's not my fault that I have acne. It's nothing I've done. Yeah. It's, it's just because I'm a teenager and there's nothing you can do about. It. I had really bad acne as a kid, and I, it was horrible. And but I didn't know. I, I had no idea whether I was eating. I'm eating a lot of sugar, and I'm eating a lot of dairy products, and I'm eating probably in retrospect. And I think you look at. I, I believe. We've seen, I think maybe Weston A. Price noticed this in his travels with the kids. They didn't have acne if they were eating a normal, healthy diet. And I think the acne is clearly impacted by nutrition because it affects you. And you can clearly see it improves when you don't eat certain things and it's worse when it's... Do you find that you focused on protein, fat, anything like that? Do you, do you just try to go out of your way to eat a lot of fat or how do um, you implement this diet? In my opinion, a garden or a person on a diet should eat like mostly fat. Is that's the energy, mm -hmm. and if you eat so much protein with no fat, then it first it's converting into sugar to juice the low your tennis and so on. I believe you should eat mostly fat, 
So whenever I eat meat, I because the beef is not really that fatty as pork. I always put lots of butter on it. Uh, I use eggs with lots of butter again. Yeah. 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 Clearly you need energy. It's fat. And, but to be just accurate, gluconeogenesis is occurring whether we eat or not. It's I know. I know. Eat. Yeah. Eating only increases the gluconeogenesis or it's very minimally. It's just some interesting studies on that. But your point taken is you do need fat for energy. Most people in my experience get between 60 and 80% of their calories from fat on a carnivore diet. And I think that's probably where most people find a, a reasonable level of function. Some people a little higher, some people a little lower, but somewhere in that neighborhood. So your boyfriend initially introduced you to the carnivore. Is he still carnivore? Yeah. Does he still do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He's and he. Why, why did he do it? Was there something um, that he wanted to fix? Yeah, because basically he is. Let's say he developed not really that well as he wish he did because his mom was the only mom and she was at work a lot because also she moves from country to another country just like that. She didn't know the line the chanting thing. So she had to go to work a lot. Then she fed him lots of garbage, like junk, like Nutella and chocolate and just complete trash. And so he, yeah, he had issues like uh, he had the white stuff in his scalp, he had acne, his jaw, according to him, didn't develop properly and other problems. He's not really six feet tall and... Yeah, so he went, and then he went vegan because he was interested. He's very interested in anything. He went in the diet and science in general. And he thought the veganism is the way, but by the time he was vegan and he found more and more information, he found that it's garbage and that the turnover that makes much more sense. So he started looking into it more. And then he ended up being carnivore, curing. Yeah, I can see even now when we eat something, when we have fruit or loads of dairy or something, there is immediate change, immediately acne for him, immediately the whites up in his hair for me, eczema immediately. And yeah, so it's just obvious that these, these ingredients are not really good for your body. The sugar is especially right because it becomes toxic in the tissues and then it then damages them. Yeah. So you've been doing it this diet for about a year, I think, is what you what I hear, and he's been doing yeah. it maybe a couple of years, two years, maybe something mm -hmm. like that. Is it that right? Yeah. Okay. And still doing okay with that. You'd mentioned if you put in some fruit or something else in the diet that you do have these issues, and so are you pretty much staying strictly meat only at this point? The past month or something, we cheated like with, I don't know, piece of food every, every week or something. So the effects after that time are not that strong because obviously the, the detoxicating mechanism just are like active nowadays because we ate it a bit every, I don't know, couple of days. But I remember back then I, when I was, when I started carnivore, I was like for three months strict, only meat, only fat, eggs. And after that, I had some food, had some cherries from the garden and it was crazy. Like the effects were literally immediate. I would be acne, terrible acne because the detoxicated mechanism work, it got of a sleep. And so it went so fast and it was just so obvious. And now I started, because I started feeling a bit, a bit bad mentally, I would say then the first thing I noticed, because also when I was straight and I ate the cherries, then the food, I felt so bad about myself, but felt so ugly, so fat, that they, I just felt terrible about myself. And now I have been also feeling a bit weird. Yeah, I started the very straight carnivore again, so findable. Do you, you said you've gotten down to, to 40, at least at 42 kilos, and now you're up around 60 kilos. Did you put on a lot of muscle when you did that? What was the, what was um, the change? Well, you know, when I was a dancer, obviously I was working out a lot. And since then I don't do any sport because I didn't like it. And I don't think I really lost that much. Obviously I lost some because before I worked out every day, but I think if I wasn't on the carnivore, I would lose much more because though there's lots of protein. And I move, I go by bikes everywhere, especially now in the spring. Yeah, my legs still stay very, very muscular. I was there, having like muscular lines. And yeah, so I think it's because what I wanted to say before, when I was 42 kilos, then I gained weight, and I ended up having 78 kilos at one point. 
And when I went on the carnivore, I had the 78. And after, I don't know how many months, I think five months, I had, yeah, five months, I had 62 that I gained to again. So I have, yeah, 60, usually not, but around 62, 64. So I lost 16 kilos basically on the carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's 32, it's like 35, 36 pounds or something like that. It's quite a bit. Do you, how you eat what, twice a day typically? What is your schedule like? I actually, yeah, at one point I ate just once a day, but now when I disturbed my hunger with the food every now and then, I eat, let's say three times a day, also because I don't work out, so I just feel like eating a best like three times or two times a day. Interesting, you said when you disturb your appetite with the fruit, when you eat some fruit, it makes you want to eat more. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people find that out, that they, they think about food more. It just, for whatever reason, makes you more constantly thinking about food, which is... Like, yeah, but um, so I remember ahead. when I was vegan, when vegetarian, I had every morning, I had a huge bowl of oatmeal. And I ate it, mm -hmm. and I my tummy was like so full. But after half an hour, I just wanted to eat more. So I ate, as I said, eight times a day because you just want to eat so much. Because you're so, you're full, but you're not satiated. And that's why people tell us to eat fiber, just to fill us physically, but it doesn't satiate you, so it's just garbage. Yeah, it's interesting. Fiber, much of your nutrition ends up being wasted when you consume a lot of fiber. There's a number of studies that show that basically you end up, all the protein, fat, and carb, not all of it, but much of it ends up just being wasted. Yeah. So. It's not a very good strategy for nutrition. What is, do you plan on staying in the Czech Republic? Is that, I know you said your boyfriend uh, was from different Romania and uh, some other places. Is your plan to stay there? Or no, no, no. I'll be to Belgium yeah, in July because okay. there so, he will so you got, Yeah, there he used to like, we will stay at his mom because then he don't have to pay rent and he can save all the money because our dream one day is to go to Ireland probably is the best place to have cows and we want to have cows and just live still sufficient like there. Yeah. You said in Ireland? Yeah. Ireland? Okay, interesting. They're somewhat, they've been talking about culling some of the cows in Ireland. But in Belgium, either French or Flemish, are you fluent in any either of those? No, I guess you can no, do both things as well. Speak yeah. English. yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, my, my one of my spouse is right in, is in northern France, but right next to Belgium. We go to Belgium a fair bit, and it's a neat country for sure. Let's see. What other things have you? Uh, you said you changed your political outlook. I guess based on maybe the diet made you maybe think differently. Do you feel that a? Uh, you know, I hate to politicize nutrition, but do you feel like you just felt differently about a lot of different things as you've changed your your belief on nutrition? Yes, one of the things is also is don't have to do the acne, but right? because I have a theory that the acne cannot be normal already because of the reason that. In the time where we get acne, basically, we get period, women get period, and they, by that, they're prepared to reproduce. And at that point, they're just supposed to be the most beautiful because the man is supposed to take you and reproduce together. So it makes no sense that there would be something disturbing your look, like acne. This just makes no sense because you, you're supposed to be the most beautiful in that age. Also, that's why a man, obviously, younger looking woman, because it just, you cannot compare a 70 or 80 or 60 year old girl with a 50 years old woman, even though that woman can look good, but she still, she will never look like when she was 16 again. So, yeah, there should be nothing disturbing your look. Also, what I found, the hormonal changes, I already told that I had painful periods and that it, it's okay nowadays. And what I think with the hormones also bound always in the mental health, the mental health, but also that I, I really want to have a baby. Most girls in my age do not feel like it. They feel like going party and so on. I never was on going party, but I also never felt so much like having a baby. It's what I now see women with babies that just so much want to have one as well. And I think that's the hormonal thing that is supposed to be already in this age of 18 is I'm going to be 18 in a bit. Yes. Yeah. Baby's a lot of work. <laughs> I can yeah. I've got four of them and I can tell you that there's a lot of work. So just make sure you're you're prepared for that and and hopefully does your boyfriend does he work does he have a job or what does he do yeah yeah he has a job he finished his high school already in belgium he's working now in that company here obviously he has a job as most people do so 
Well, ultimately you find something you enjoy and then you call it, then it's not so much work as a, a passion. Anyway, it's a, it's a interesting time of life. Do you have some advice, like what advice would you have for your sort of peers, like people in your age group that are being obviously sub subjugated, they're not subjugated, subject to really a lot of what I think is propaganda, sort of plant-based propaganda. Do you have any advice for your sort of your generation. Yeah, I would say don't be lazy and educate yourself. Don't be a sheep and just don't follow everything there. Don't don't follow this beat and bat. Just think about everything. Just think about the like you want to get because I don't want to live like most people live. I don't want to go by the beat and bat. So I want to change the way. And most people don't want to live that way. But it's just kind of it's easier for them to just go by that and think. It's connected to the nutrition as well, because what they hear around that, that's the easiest thing just to take information from the nearest media and so on. But if they, if they really want to be healthy, just, you have to think about it. It's a lot of work. I remember in the beginning, it was so confusing for me, but when you get into it, you really understand it better. And then you understand everything so much. Why is that? Yeah. What is the political climate like in, in the Czech Republic? Is it... I don't know if you have national elections coming. I know a lot of countries do right now. Some of Europe is going very liberal. Some of it's going very, the EU, some of it's going very conservative. What is the trend in the Czech or do you know? Czech Republic has always, there's been history as well. So I can say from history and now this is the same. Czech people don't really care. They just go with the flow. They went with Germans, with Austrians, events. And... So I don't think they're, they're going more liberal because we are in the Western Europe, even though we are central, but yeah, usually we are concerned the Western Europe. So all the Western Europe goes liberal, so also Czechia goes liberal. Yeah, I think it's the Italians elected a conservative, I guess, president and some of the other countries. I think Poland has been very conservative. I can't remember. It's, there's a lot to keep track of, but it's interesting to see because it does seem to impact nutrition policy. And it's not that I have a particular strong feel either way. But I think when it comes to nutrition, when you have people saying that we're going to maybe force you to give up eating meat or restrict you in some way, that's concerning to me. Do you get any, do you get any sensation that might happen well, to you? I, that they I, might say I, that you I get a very strong sensation because that's why we have this three with my boyfriend to go to Ireland to have cows because we are afraid that the, I don't know, price of meat will just skyrocket. Or it won't be possible to buy meat so easily in the shop. So that's why you want to have a self-sufficient income of that meat. We would we don't want to eat plants and bugs after that's what you saw. Yeah, for sure. I can see why you wouldn't want to do that, as I don't either. I think, but I like I said, I know Ireland. They've been. I, I, a lot of people push back against. I don't know if it'll go through, but they were talking about culling or killing a lot of their cow, their cattle to you know, save, the, save the planet from climate change. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you feel, because I mean, a lot of people, we hear that young people have climate anxiety or they're getting ill because they're worried too much about climate change is making them sick. Is that something that you personally deal with or do you know people that seem to be that way or your other classmates and things like that? I think it's propaganda as well. I don't think there is any such a big issue with climate change. Like I think it's all made up just for economical and whatever are the reasons. I'm concerned about other things more, which is for example, so the plastics, as I saw some videos from New Delhi or mountains of trash from America, from Europe, just put there in India or in the ocean and in Africa. Yeah, but I think the carnivore yeah, diet is very minimalistic when it comes to all the packages because when you buy meat, it's like a huge pile of meat and you don't buy cookies one by one, all packaged in packages from plastic. And also hope, I had an idea that I'll go just with a glass jar to the butcher shop to just not get any plastic inside, but they tell me it's not hygienic and they still put it on the scale, so it was really useless to try doing something with that in, in this case. Yeah, I hope one day we will have the cows and there will be no more plastic waste. But it's not only plastic, it's all the cars, the fuel and all that, the buildings. And I think the biggest problem, I talk about it in my videos on my YouTube channel a lot, is that I don't think the problem is eating meat. It's not diet in general that much. It's consumerism in general. If you consume anything, furniture, clothes, foods, coffee, buildings, just... It's, it's all bad because there are so many people and if everyone will zoom that much, it's just done here. Yeah, certainly pollution, garbage everywhere, 
plastic in the food supplies concerning how do you deal with that or fix it? It's hard to say. And clearly I know from my standpoint as someone who's eaten carnivore now for almost eight years i produce so much less trash i barely i eat off a cutting board <laughs> i rinse it off and i have a knife and a fork and I, I really use very little resources to to allow me to eat like i do and often sometimes the meat will come in butcher paper which might be a, a solution with regard to that let me see we've got just a few minutes left is there anything else did you want to share that you'd like to share with people? Anything else you'd like to discuss? Oh, I want to go ask you one question. And that is, if you think if there is if someone eats well, free, clean carnivore diet, meaning uses condiments, herbs, but like still 90% of you percent is meat, do you think it can have impact on mental health or health in general? Like you can actually see issues. Uh, yeah, anything's possible for sure. Yeah, you know, there's some people that have particular sensitivities to things. You just have to find out. It's, this is in, the beauty about a carnivore diet is it's because it's elimination and you add things in to see how you react to that. Yeah, there are people that will say that, hey, if I eat, I don't know, garlic, it makes me feel weird for whatever reason. It's not to say everyone's going to have that same response. And there's plenty of people that do 90% carnivore and are just thriving. So it's not, it's not that everybody has the same level of dysfunction or problem with different things but yeah I, I think so i think it's possible that adding something in may be problematic for particular susceptible people i think i, I see it over and over again so okay. yeah for sure i'll tell you what is there anything else you have a youtube channel what's it called oh uh, it's meaty dash bunny meaty bunny yes <laughs> okay that's cute interesting all right stephanie it's been a pleasure chatting with you i wish you luck with your future and hope you have lots of babies and have a healthy life and thank uh, you so much uh enjoy enjoy getting healthy and staying healthy okay yeah thank you for your interview as well thank you appreciate it all right